What is up, ladies and gentlemen, Spadio? And it has literally been over a year since we last did a Persona Q first experience talk. Damn, it has been a while. But anyway, today we're going to be talking about my first experience, at least on what I can remember. Of the Innerbar Pride Exhibit, aka the fourth dungeon of the game, aka the second last dungeon of the game, as far as I know of. At least I hope it's the second last. Because I already started what I think is the last, and that's the clock tower. But we're not talking about that until we beat it. So, nonetheless, let's just get started. So, a few days ago, I finally dove into Persona Q again. You watch one video, you get the craving to play the game. Yeah, I'm addicted to it now. <laughs> I am addicted to Persona Q again, but anyway, anyway, let's just get started. Now, it's, it has literally been like a year or so since I last actually played. I stopped playing this dungeon around halfway through the fourth floor of this dungeon. And there are five floors. Each one more annoying than the last. <laughs> this time to take a long time to beat. I can't remember everything, but the one thing I clearly remember, and if I remember the name of it right, I believe Nelto called her. Mystery Food X Final Edition. <laughs> Holy shit, that was hilarious. That was hilarious. <laughs> you, they pretty much gathered around all of the girls bad cooking, fused it together, <laughs> And fired it using Zen's arrow. At the FOE chasing everyone. Instantly KOing and killing. In the FOE. As soon as the FOE swallowed it. Instantly fucking killed him to death. <laughs> that is the power of Mystery Food X. Holy shit. And sadly, I don't think we're going to be seeing any more of that. Maybe we'll see more of that in Persona 5? But who knows? Who knows? I love the Mystery Food X idea. <laughs> but at any rate, right, there was a scene to where the moment you enter a door, you door or floor, I can't remember which, but a new FOE chases you and your crew. You end up splitting apart. You can go on one side or you can go on the other. And I went with the side Nelta went on. So, <laughs> so yeah, so I actually witnessed the scene of the FOE's Death. And the best part is, Kanzi also got knocked out cold. <laughs> I forget why, but he got knocked out cold. That's all I can remember. Honestly, though, out of all the scenes that you actually see, 
while you're traveling throughout the whole dungeon. And the mystery for the next final edition has to be my favorite part. <laughs> but anyway, it seems like that scene is exclusive to the Persona 4 side only from the looks of it. And honestly, honestly, <laughs> I loved it. It was hilarious. I just remember dying of laughter when I was witnessing the whole scene. Best part, best part. And out of the events that you actually see traveling throughout the dungeon, that's pretty much the only one I can really remember. Not counting the final boss of the dungeon and the story that falls after you beat the boss. Holy shit. But before we actually start talking about that, let's talk about the actual dungeon itself and why I found it annoying. If you haven't checked out the only <laughs> late first experience Persona Q talk video that's actually still up and haven't gotten deleted because it was on the other channel that got deleted and that would be uh, the Evil Spirit Club I think that's what it's called let me check real quick once it loads. Yeah, yeah, the Evil Spirit Club is still up. And honestly, I remember that dungeon being something. <laughs> Considering that video was an hour and a half, I think I had words for it. <laughs> and a lot of them. But anyway, it's where was I going with that? I also can't remember like usual. But with the dungeon, yeah I remember that. With the dungeon in the Evil Spirit Club, honestly, that dungeon was just straight up ridiculous. It's not that it was annoying, it was more like, it was ridiculous on what you had to do. Like, in the Evil Spirit Club, you had to, there was one part to where you had to walk through a four room area. And you have to walk in and out of those four rooms, intertwined, connected with each other. And you have to walk through those four rooms in a specific pattern in order to advance. And the same could be said with a treasure hunter puzzle too. Both of those were ridiculous. And pretty sure I talked heavily on those two puzzles in that video. If I remember correctly. But when it comes to this dungeon, there wasn't anything too ridiculous. It was more or less, it was annoying. The amount of trial and error and backtracking you had to do really got repetitive and got boring. To the point where I stopped playing the game for like a year. So, it's just like, yeah. Yeah, that happened. And, like, when it comes to backtracking and stuff. Oh, God. The fourth floor, by far, is the longest and the most tedious and annoying, considering it was the one that 
literally took me like a year to surpass and conquer. Because I got sick of all the backtracking. But luckily, I maxed out that map. 100% at that floor. Even though there's still one block I didn't touch. Guess the game fucked up, but hey, I'll take that for 100% completion treasure for free. I'm fine with that. That also happened. I actually beat the dungeon last night. So in other words, that was September 27th, 2016. It is the 28th right now. During the day. <laughs> oh my god, but yeah, they're like, you had to go through certain shrine, shri I can't fucking say it, shrines, temples, lakes, whatever you want to call them, um, in a certain way. Which, again, is ridiculous. Especially if you're not a good reader, so... Yeah, I had more of a trouble figuring them out than other people, but I still did it. And oddly enough, on my own. No help with a guide or whatever. <laughs> Surprisingly, all it took was a sit little trial and error. <laughs> but the correct pattern for those shrines that you have to walk through on the fourth floor was south, north, east, and west. I did the south gate first, if I remember correctly. Then I did the west then the east, and I saved the north for last. So, basically I fucked up a lot. <laughs> Considering I never did or filled out or even entered the north side of the map until I did everything else. I tried every other pattern that you could possibly do with the first three, and considering the second in gateway you had to go through was in the north, yeah, it took me a while. <laughs> so, yeah. But nonetheless, I, oh yeah, right, there was the whole torts, the holy flame. Boy, was that a bitch, too. <laughs> like, honestly, at one point or another, you had to avoid a bunch of fucking FOEs that were fucking entirely ridiculously difficult. Especially if you don't have the correct setup. Because now that I've actually re-entered the game, and know how to strategize and stuff again in the game. I know how to defeat the enemies, and I'm going to have to face my most dreaded enemy yet again. And try to beat it a second time for a side quest, I believe. Well, is it? But yeah, the Holy Flame is basically like the Olympics in a way. You pet, you light up the torts, you light up the bonfire, and you can only carry the holy flame with you for 12 steps, I believe. It's 12 or 13. I'll have to do, I'll have to get the 3DS out and count the blocks again to get a correct number. But I believe it is 12 or 13 steps until the Holy Flame 
dies on you, and you have to go back, get the flame again, hope it doesn't run out, until you reach the next bonfire, and on top of that, you have random encounters in your way. You have FOEs that chase you down. That, that chase you down if you have the Holy Flame. And chase you down if they see you. And they are pretty fast. So eventually I just said, oh fuck this. I'm gonna bop these assholes. Let's go to war with these FOEs. Fuck the puzzles. Let's destroy all the FOEs and enemies that stand in our way. And that's exactly what I did. And eventually, till I believe floor two, these dudes come into play. And that's the whole. For a guy killing is I forget what it's called, but it's in a bunch of animes and stuff. Do where you have four dudes holding up the queen or king type thing, sitting on a throne, that type of thing. Four dudes, four FOEs. Killing one of those. As like, you have to try to figure out their walking pattern. Avoid them. And if you have the Holy Flame, you're fucked even more. Because they move twice as fast. So you really have to carefully analyze and predict where they're going to move next. And that is a bit. And knowing me like the idiot I am, trying to destroy everything in my path, I got fucking destroyed. <laughs> and I continued to get destroyed for over a year. <laughs> but then again, I stopped playing for like over a year. But you get the point, it took me a long time. I think I only beat this enemy once, only once. And the thing is, if you don't have the right setup on your party, if you don't have the right personas with the right skills, oh my god, <laughs> these dudes are impossible to beat, even if you cap out the main protagonist. Yeah, you heard me right. I capped out the main protagonist straight up from level 64 or something like that all the way to 99 in this dungeon. <laughs> I think I mentioned that in the last Persona Q Talk video, actually. But yeah, I capped him out and was still having difficulty with these guys. Here I thought I'd molly up their asses once I reached level 99, but nope. <laughs> nope. You really need to get the right skill set on your guys to take these fools down. It is ridiculous. And they are on floor 2 and 4, I believe. I know they're on 4 4 for a certain. And the thing is, there's a new type of FOE on 4 3 and so up on 4 4 that leap around like a fucking frog. So you have to try to predict and analyze and remember where those dudes leap. Luckily, they're solo. They're the same guys. That are uh, four and one, but they're so low <laughs> that they still take a while to take down. Plus, they'll gyrate in the nether regions up in your fucking face. <laughs> it's a spiky hilarious. But it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, the moment I entered this dungeon, all I'm thinking is, 
Kanzi Tatsumi. Sato Kanzi. Oh, God. I'm not going to spoil anything. Anything. When it comes to Kanzi. And stuff from Persona for the original game. Das Golden. Not going to spoil that stuff. But, oh, God. Just the atmosphere reminds you of it. <laughs> well, at any rate, let's just get back into talking about the right setup that you pretty much need to defeat the four dudes in one. <laughs> like, from the looks of it, you, you literally need to... Like, you literally need to agility bind their asses, along with magic bind their asses, especially that. Like, those two bind agility and magic on their, on any FOE for that matter. Bind them with both of that, you are basically set. But landing that isn't exactly easy. You're gonna get lucky sometimes. And sometimes you're just not going to have any luck. But like, once you agility bind them, and if you have merit arrows, and Hasutobi, be like, dude. And if you power charge with those two skills, with them, agility bind it, and magic bind it, every hit you make, is not going to miss because they can't move at all. You're guaranteed five to like eight hits, like seven to eight hits, depending on what move you're using. And on top of that, with the power toads, you're doing massive damage, especially if they're not dodging. Now, you might be wondering why. Would you need to magic bind their asses? Simple. They can use Diorama. <laughs> the highest solo healing skill in the game. <laughs> and they and that heals for them at least. It heals 9,800 HP, I believe. That's like capped out, basically. <laughs> They're basically getting the full HP back. <laughs> so if they get that off, you're gonna have a long fight ahead of you. <laughs> like, holy shit. But, yeah. You can see why this dungeon is annoying. It's not that it is hard, it is just annoying. Because you got two options. Fight a long battle, or two, or three. Or, just run away and try to rip your hair out, trying to solve a puzzle or two. So, yeah, this dungeon is definitely annoying. Guarantee. Either or. <laughs> Either or. That's pretty much the dungeon, really. And on top of that, you have sealed doors. Special sealed doors. <laughs> That you can't pass through unless you have the Holy Flame on deck with you and try to pass through the doors that are the regular doors that are sealed. You need the Holy Flame with you. And if it burns out, you have to go back, get the Holy Flame again. And again, there are still random encounters getting in your way, which makes it even longer than it needs to be. It's, it's ridiculous. And then the special sealed doors can only be unsealed if you go through the right pilgrimage. 
go through the right path, through the right gateways, in the right order. And again, random encounters, FOEs, are all in your way. And it's annoying as fuck. The third dungeon was ridiculous. This dungeon was annoying and extremely long. Honestly, I'm not sure if I actually ever talked about well, how I ended up facing Elizabeth in each of the dungeons. I probably did, but I can't remember. But nonetheless, Elizabeth in this dungeon was honestly free. She was free as fuck. Holy shit, she was free. Again, I ended up, I believe I ended up having Alice on deck with me before the fight. So I ended up landing Magic Bind and Agility Bind. And I believe Strength Bind. And I used Tenta to fill and Panic Tall. <laughs> she couldn't do nothing. And on top of that, you ended up on top of that with Hasa Toby and Amunculus Arrows. Dude, she was done in like two or three turns. That's kind of the same thing that ended up going down when I ended up fighting Margaret for the first time. But that happened in you in Wonderland Floor 3, I believe. And that was a side quest that you unlock by having the two main protagonists of the game the Persona 3 side and the Persona 4 side at level 55 or higher. And apparently that's the quest you get. You get to fight Margaret and you get to literally evolve your personas. So you've got, you know, Kami max level now and always max level, but now has Instead of Izunagi, he has Amano Izunagi <laughs> resisting everything but light, knowing dark, like dude, no weaknesses at all, and on top of that getting heat riser. So if I remember correctly, that actually raises greatly raises your attack, defense, and agility, I believe, or it's evasion, one or the other. I can't remember exactly, but holy shit. We're going for broke at this point. And then you had the Persona 3 protagonist, which Persona 3 in general, I'm still in the dark with. I'm blind. I haven't beaten or gotten too far into the game or into the movies. And he ended up, and Orpheus ended up evolving into, <laughs> ah, what's the word again? Messiah. Like, dude. That's just insane. And learning Depilitate. I never used Depilitate in any Persona 4 when I did before, but once I actually understood what it did, it's, it's actually really good. Not so if I'm going to use it in this game though, I haven't yet, but maybe, at, at any rate, at any rate, after beating Margaret, you end up not going to the Velvet Room, having a chat, and in the end, now that you've done that request, once you level up any of your other allies, they get the next state of evolution for their persona, <laughs> which is ridiculous. Oh my god. But yet, my main party for most of this dungeon was actually, you know, Kami, obviously. Main protagonist, you can't get rid of him. But then you have 
now to on deck and edging towards level 99 with a evol- <laughs> with Naruto's evolu- Naruto's persona's evolution then you have Kanzi edging towards level 90 it is a persona newly evolved into Mach 10 Mao like dude we're going ham we are going ham but nonetheless Nonetheless, the main team we have for most of this dungeon was you, Naruto, Kanji, I believe Yosuke, and Mitsuo. Mitsuo. I really get their names fucking confused. You got Mitsuo, you got Mitsuo, you got Mitsuo. Like, dude, the names are too similar. <laughs> But Mitsu- Mitsuo ain't in this game. But nonetheless... Nonetheless... What team did I end up going with... For the boss of this dungeon? Honestly, I... I some... I ended up grinding over the past two days. Like over the past two days or so. A little bit with the main, with the Persona 3 main protagonist, and with Zen and Ray, the Persona Q crew. And honestly, I only leveled those two up a little bit, because at this point, I don't know if you'll get an extra event or whatever if you have them at a certain level or stuff. Better safe than sorry. I'm trying to do everything possible in this game, so, yeah. <laughs> but, nonetheless, I ended up, for the boss of this dungeon, I ended up going in with you, with you, Naruto, Kanzi, Persona 3 main protagonist, and Zen and Rei. <laughs> And those last two were pretty low level. They're like mid late fifties. And here we have the others edging towards level ninety nine and one of them is max level. So it's it's pretty crazy, it's pretty crazy. At any rate Oh my god Holy shit like, like when you enter this dungeon, from the beginning, it's a nice, vibrant, happy, outgoing, fired up place. It's a festival. <laughs> the Innovat Pride exhibit is a festival. It's festival time with Day Kaito. <laughs> Body fight all the way. Anyway, at any rate, like, you're diving into a festival. When you see the name in a Pride exhibit, you're thinking this is probably going to be a Japanese type museum. But no, it's a festival. <laughs> Surprisingly. And on top of that, that high time end up making it to the fifth floor, the final floor, and you end up going through the dungeon's entrance for the first time once you made it to the fifth floor. The atmosphere is crazy. You have, at first, you have a bright red type starlit sky. And all of a sudden it's purple and shit. And starting to become more dark. And every other floor is the same as it always was. Until you get to the fifth floor. The fifth floor is like you're entering into Evil Spirit Club again. A dark. 
depressing dead zone. That's what it was. Holy shit. And guess who the boss is? <laughs> Holy shit. Like, the boss for this dungeon ended up being Shadow Ray, which is crazy. Holy shit. I was hoping they were going to do some sort of a I'll face myself real me versus sad me type thing in this game like Persona 4 and they did it. They fucking did it. The only difference is sad away the, the moment I seen the scene well the one of the parts of the final scene once you beat the boss, you end up seeing Shadow Ray disappearing into nothing. And if you are able <laughs> and if you face your shadow self normally, really, once you beat your shadow, you obtain the power of Persona, but in Ray's case, that did not happen. And when that didn't happen, all I was thinking was Mitsuo Kubo. Mitsuo. Sano Mitsuo. <laughs> Mitsuo denies his shadow's very existence. He ignores it. He denies its existence, even though it is a part of him. And again, this is spoilers for Persona 4. <laughs> Sorry, but I had to talk about it because this is what I am thinking. This was what I was thinking when I was first experiencing it. Sato, so basically Rei and Mitsuo are the same. We encounter a bunch of Sato's in Persona 4 Das Golden, but there is only one Sato that disappears. And that is Mitsuo's shadow. The same thing happened here with Rei. Which is crazy. <laughs> After we beat Shadow Rei, Yukiko starts talking about how we all have different sides that we don't want to admit to each other, but we have to accept to a And she says to a shadow in fear that you're not me, screaming it like everyone else does in Persona 4. Which again is crazy. Oh my god. Like so many feelings was so many feelings was going down during this final boss scene. But anyway, Sato Ray comes out of nowhere when we try and when we try to go towards the item of the dungeon and says and Puma says stay away. And comes out of nowhere wearing a hospital robe, which is from the looks of it. At first, it seemed like a night dress, but it looks a little bit more like a hospital, a hospital robe. I almost forgot the word. But oh my god. The symbolism behind all the dungeons so far and everything 
I realized that only earlier today. <laughs> it's it's pretty crazy. It it really is. What Sato Ray is wearing resembles was half of the evil spirit club because it is a hostile. The symbolism is real in this game, fam. Holy shit, but I've had to not long enough about this. At any rate, in the end, in the end, Shadow Ray ends up transforming, transmuting into my worst fear imaginable. Like, I'm paranoid as fuck. And I know for a fact ghosts exist. <laughs> I know for a fact. I have seen my own two eyes. So I know they exist. I believe in the supernatural. And I don't want to fuck with that shit. <laughs> And Santa Ray ends up transmute. I'm pretty sure I talked about the whole. Ah, what's the fucking word? I know for a fact in the last video I ended up talking about how I hate possessed dolls and teddy bears and stuff. Yeah, that's like my worst fear. If I ever encounter that, I I don't know what I would do. I don't know. But Saturday transforms into a possessed, evil-looking rabbit. Stuffed rabbit. The rabbit you see here on screen, screen becomes possessed. It swallows up Saturday. And dude, the fucking music transitioned. When the evil rabbit's head comes out of the stuffing. Oh my god. Honestly though, it was epic as hell. It 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 honestly was. Oh my god. Just like the music transition from that point was so fucking epic. I hope there's an extended version of it somewhere on YouTube or something, because I would get I would listen to that sit for fucking ever. Oh my god, and the music for the boss itself was epic as hell. And on top of that, once you you think you've beaten the possessed rabbit, Sad Array, you're thinking wrong because it comes back from the dead. Not once, but twice. You kill it once. It comes back to life. Once you kill it then, it's dead for good. And again, that boss, honestly, I wish it was hollow. It, it was pretty free. <laughs> it was pretty free, I'm not gonna lie. Again, same strategy. Hasutobi, Power Toads. Amongst arrows, agility bind, magic bind. You've got the game in the bag. <laughs> Holy shit, that was epic. And again, after the fight, I already talked about the whole Mitsuo Das Das Ray Shadow and disappearing thing, so we're gonna move on. So in the end, 
Zen ends up picking up what is in is what Primus picks up the final item in the dungeon. From the main angle for the dungeon. And it is a letter that reads Please uh, what what was it again? Something Oh wait wait Dear Nanoko Dear Nanoko Please rest in peace Yuki That is what it reads And honestly At that point you're thinking who is Noki? And who is Yuki? And honestly, later on, like later on that night and stuff, I was thinking, oh god. Yukiko Amagi's nickname is Yuki. <laughs> the same name at the end of that letter. So, then. Noki me Yuki? Like, oh, oh my god, the conspiracy theories are real. They are not confirmed yet. It is a theory of mine. And oh my god, if it is, that'd be epic as fuck. <laughs> Yuki go meeting up beforehand. But nonetheless, in the end, Zen explains that his real name, he remembers everything, and his real name isn't Zen, but Kronos. Basically, a servant of time of sorts. One that brings those to the afterlife. And he restores Ray's memories. And soon later tells <laughs> us all that Ray is dead. Ray is a dead soul. Lost in a rift. In heaven, lost in a rift in heaven, like, dude, holy shit, like, holy shit. Now, the story in this game makes it worthwhile. Going to the bullshit dungeons, <laughs> in my opinion, it's it's crazy, and it gets even crazier. <laughs> Holy shit! Like it's too much to handle, and it's so sad. Like I was tearing up all over the fucking place <laughs> when I was listening and watching and hearing all of this. Like, dude, Ray is dead. Ray says no and runs away. We follow her. She runs to the clock tower. <laughs> and oh my god, and out of basically nowhere, a massive shadow, a massive bunch of shadows come together to form as one. Just as almost, it's almost kind of like the same instance to where I'm not gonna even say a word about it. Because it is massive spoilers for Persona 4, but in November, like over in November. 
But anyway, a scene happens in Basola 4 that a bunch of cells come together to form one. And I'm not saying any more than that. The same instance kind of happens here. And oh my god, an animated anime cutscene. The shadows swallow, the massive shadows, all the shadows swallow up Ray, taking her with them to the top of the clock tower and transforms into a massive spider imprisoning her inside of it at the top of the t clock tower. Sick goes on more. Sick goes from bad to worse, and it is insane. <laughs> and then you end up hearing a massive explanation about how Zen, aka Kronos, met Ray, aka you probably guessed it. No count is Ray's real name. Remember the letter? Dear Nanoko, please rest in peace, Yuki. Nanoko is Ray. Da da. <laughs> and, and all the while, I feel like a remix of the song I'll Face Myself is playing that whole fucking background. It makes it even sadder and cooler. Like, oh my god. Also, I could sit here and talk about everything in Ray's, like, in Zen's explanation. But <laughs> that'll probably drag out for two more hours. <laughs> so yeah. Put a long fucking story of sort with my long rambling. Let's just say <laughs> Let's just say Ray, aka Noko, aka Noko, wanted to go to school. She so wanted to go to Yasugami High. The Persona 4 protagonist high school. She so was in a hostel. And the Evil Spirit Club is a haunted school das haunted hostel. Ray S Nanoko aka who I'm going to refer to from here on out as Ray wanted to go to school really badly. And was in a hostel, very ill, fighting for her life. And the person who got discharged and was by her side for a long time was the girl named Yuki. Whether it's Yukiko or not, I still don't know. But that's one damn hell of a theory, and I kind of hope it's true. But, nonetheless, Ray is deceased. She never got to go to school. She never got to make friends. She had no friends. She had nobody. No father, no mother, no parents. 
She even states that her name is Noko, meaning the second child, the second one born, the unwanted child. Even her mother says to her, I probably shouldn't have even had you. Something along those lines. I can't remember those exact... I can't remember the exact words. But the point being, the mother told... Oh, that she didn't want her. Pretty deep, sad shit, huh? I know, right? I was tearing up like fuck. Like, oh my god. She had nobody. She wanted to go to school. She couldn't go to school. She had no parents. She didn't even have her own health. Which means she was... Which means she didn't have the best health. And deceased and died young. Ended up meeting Kronos. K.A. Zen. Halfway to heaven. A rift within heaven. A Yas Agami festival was created by Zen. And the Persona 3 and 4 protagonists and friends were summoned there by hearing the clock tower's bell. The clock tower's bell is what signified the creation of that universe of Yasugami High that Zen, aka Kronos, made for Rei as a sort of last wish to try to get this girl to open her mouth and speak. She was dead silent that she was dead, knowing that she was dead. Having nothing. Even her shadow says, why was I even born? What was the point of me even being born? And I'm not going to lie. That is a topic that I can clearly go on about in a future series deaths video. But that is for a later date. Why was I even born? <laughs> really deep shit. Really deep stuff. In the end, we have to save Ray from the clock tower. Shit is getting real. <laughs> like, dude. And the worst part is. The clock tower has like eight or nine floors, I believe. That's like twice as long as the last. That's like twice as long as this dungeon. That's insane. No matter how you look at it, though, some things simply cannot be accepted. And even. Zen himself states that in the game, and it is true. I may have overcome my darker side. I may have overcome my deep eight-year depression, 
but and I may be more the positive than ever but even still there are some things I will never accept about myself no matter what some things can't be accepted and in Ray's case is the inescapable fact of her own death. Knowing that she had nobody. It would be one thing if you had someone to give your life meaning. But to be born and to have no reason for living to be born simply to die. Something like that cannot be accepted. At least not easy. Either or, we've gone on a little over an hour. And at this point, I think I've talked about just about everything I want to talk about. <laughs> So yeah, uh, this game is getting real, <laughs> and honestly, I can't wait to find out what happens next. I already started at the clock tower dungeon, already on the third floor. For the most part, the third dungeon really doesn't seem difficult. It seems straightforward. But nonetheless, we have finally conquered the fourth dungeon the Inuba Pride Exhibit. Like, oh my god. This dungeon was something else. It truly was. And on that note, like, comment, subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed this somehow. Hope you guys enjoyed my rambling, my thoughts. And my first experience with this whole dungeon. And honestly, honestly, it's something else. It really is. If you made it all the way through, props to you. Props to you. I know I'll see you guys around.